tax is theft whilst other people are probably on the YouTube right now talking about how to maximize your tax return or how to buy an investment property and save on tax, I'm gonna take a different route. So tax is theft. This is a narrative that I've been standing on the sidelines watching things like YouTube comments and Twitter comments, and I've slowly been watching this narrative grow and grow and grow. So today I'm gonna to go a bit deeper into the weeds into what does taxes theft mean? Because it's one of those narratives that people use to explain things in an overly simplistic sort of way. Something like you will own nothing and be happy. What does that actually mean? You don't actually believe that, do you? So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about why is this tax is theft narrative growing? Why I don't think it is. I'm gonna talk about potentially why it's dangerous and why it's pu pushing populism. Then I'm gonna talk about, okay, well, maybe this is actually what we need because we can all agree that things are declining in terms of the outcomes that the average person are getting. So maybe this is the catalyst. Let's dig into it. Okay, so I'm no expert on this whole taxes theft thing, but I know it's been around for a long time. If I had to guess, it's probably when income tax started being permanent, which is as far as what I can remember through my reading is probably the early 1900s when that happened. Before then, there were only special levies, which were to fund wars and stuff like that. So I can imagine back in those times, especially in, in America, people thinking, well, you are taking our money. This is the land of the free. What can we use that for? What are you going to use our money for? This is our money. So I think that's where it comes from. But where it is now is a different thing than libertarianism, which is what I class that to be. But in the current day, I feel like the narrative is things aren't going my way. I'm unhappy with the way our society is going. I'm going to put this down as a narrative because I'm unhappy. If you scratch beneath the surface, this is what I think people are thinking. I think they're looking at their taxes. They're looking at the cost of living. They're looking at interest rates on their home loans or their debt repayments. They're looking at their kids, feeding their kids, educating their kids. They're looking at energy. All of this stuff is getting hard, harder and harder to keep up with. And actually what it's doing is it's stopping people from in investing in future things. So people are losing opportunity. And I think people, they're looking at things and they're starting to crack. They're sitting there looking at this tax situation, for example. The average person's income tax rate is 33 or 37% or something like that. They're looking at, okay, now my super next year, which I have limited control over, goes to 12% per year. So I, I can't decide to use that 12% for me now. That's for my retirement. People are looking at that and they're looking at tax on other things. They're looking at tax on alcohol where it's easily half the price in other countries in the world. They're looking at smokes, the old darts, they're, they're taxed to, to the hilt. This is the thing that I don't get. Like if we look at cigarettes, I'm in Melbourne. Anyone I know that smokes isn't buying the actual proper cigarettes that are taxed with the nose. They're buying the bikey cigarettes, the illegal bikey cigarettes. And the government are losing all all this tax revenue. I think I saw $90 million they lost in the last tax year or something. Apparently they're doing nothing about the crime. It comes down to this point, people are looking at, hey, I'm paying tax. We, we have a social contract. So the deal is we pay tax, we get stuff from the government in return. So we get things like the rule of law, right? So why, why aren't they chasing those bikies down? Why aren't they doing something about the child crime? Why aren't they doing something about all of these people creating all of these crimes? Think of women getting murdered. These are all guys that have been out on bail. Why aren't our government doing that? We're paying our tax. Our taxes are paying to go going towards protecting people. Why it's going to increase in the future is because people can see this wealth gap. There's no opportunity. And actually that misconception, I guess you could call it false narrative that you've got opportunity. That's slowly getting revealed and people are going, Hey, I've got a real battle on my hands. And that's not a very comfortable alignment with reality that people are facing now. I actually think that's always been the case. It's just the last 20 or 30 years, no recession, government printing, all of that has conditioned the average Australian to expect what is actually beyond them in terms of what their income can afford in terms of a lifestyle. Anyway, people are starved of opportunity. Now, this doesn't get very good. However you look at it, if we all believe that there's less opportunity, at least perceived opportunity for the average person going forward. Things don't get better for society. Actually, people are more angry, the crime goes up, all of that sort of bad stuff goes up. So I've been thinking about this taxes theft narrative for a while and 
I ran into a mate, had some drinks with a mate a couple of weeks ago, and he started talking about the taxes theft thing. And I started going, okay, well, this is interesting. Let's have a let's have a bit of a chit chat about this. I love having these conversations because no one has the wrong or right answer. But this conversation started going into, oh, we should tear down the system and we, we could create our own little jurisdictions, so to say, and all the money could go back into small councils, smaller than what they were under the Kennet era when Kennet had to kind of centralize everything. Uh, what I got out of that conversation was this position was more about the anger at what the current system is. And the reason why it's quite dangerous is because actually the system is there for a reason, right? And my position is, is that the system is there for a reason. It's just that people who hold the power have corrupted the system. So what's that saying? Absolute power corrupts absolutely, something like that. I just think that, yes, there are problems. Clearly there's problems. But if you tear down the system, what you do is you just create more disorder than what there already is. And this is why it's quite dangerous because these narratives appeal to populism. You'll get politicians starting to come out and push this stuff, saying Texas theft. And at the start, it might be, you know, wind back some basic stuff, but I can see where this is going. Things will get more extreme. And if you don't actually think that, then maybe you shouldn't be watching my channel because from my experience in money, I can see that People have less opportunity. They have less opportunity and they've been fooled into thinking they got more opportunity by accessing borrowed money, whether that's from borrowing money in a personal name or borrow or the government borrowing money and then just giving handouts to everyone. That's where it's headed long term. And I think that people pushing these narratives, playing with people's emotions because people feel like they're being screwed over. And don't get me wrong, I, I actually agree with them. But saying just because this isn't working, we should tear everything down and make a different system. I'm sorry, that's just going to create more disorder, more media in control, more politicians in control, more rich people making money off poor people. It's just going to be more of the same. So this psychology is dangerous, but I'm going to steel man this because actually maybe it's what we need. Maybe it's the catalyst we need to turn things around. What do I mean by catalyst? Well, these moments in time where, for example, the wealth gap have been to such an extent that they actually turn around. These times have happened before and actually generally what happens is there's some sort of catalyst for change. So I think back to US in the 1950s when the wars had ended, they'd won the war or wars and they spent a whole lot of money on the wars. So what was required was hefty taxation. So if you look at income taxes in America in the 50s, you'll see that they started balancing out the gap between the rich and the poor. And what actually happened as a result of that was actually the poor got more opportunity and it led to a golden era for the American economy. So maybe we need a catalyst for change. Maybe we need things to go so bad, the people get to a point where they, where they have to vote. And I'll make one final point is that the people who these times are most affecting now they're actually young families. They're people 35 who are renting or they're in that age bracket where they've just taken on debt and the interest rates have gone up. So these guys are the guys that are most punished for it. For it. So the further we go along in time, it means the older these guys are going to get. What's going to happen when they're all 45 to 50, right? That's going to be the majority of the voting population, or it's going to be close to the majority of the voting population. Eventually, what will happen is the same thing that has happened quite a number of times in the past is that the people, democracy will work eventually in the end, and the people will vote in people that represent their values and their needs and their beliefs. Right now, we don't have that. And I actually think there's a number of years of what we're going through is going to continue, which means more house prices going up, more mental crisis, more women violence crisis, more cost of living crisis, more everything crisis. I just think it's going to continue. And actually, that's the most likely thing to happen in my mind. Sorry for the rant. If any of that kind of made sense to you, let us know, because I'm really just talking off the top of my head here. Wrote three minutes worth of notes before I started this. If you totally disagree with me, that's cool. Give me something else to kind of hold on to here. Let us know in the comments. Cheers.